Tracy and today I'm going to be doing a video talking about underrated modern cards part three. I will list a, the other two videos that I've done in the description box below. One day I kind of went on a rampage and I just started making these lists so I have like two more lists already prepped for you guys already ready to go. All I need to do are film those videos. Um, I just think it's really fun to talk about cards that may kind of go by the wayside. You know if you're if you're in the modern realm you will hear so much about all of these popular cards um, that a lot of cards like these kind of go by the wayside. So here's a couple of modern cards. Um, I'm going to be only talking about 10 in this video that I think are really sweet but do not get the time of day and do not get the love. The first, I swear someone's going to come down and like hunt me down because I keep mentioning this card, but Zell's Persecution. I'm really not going to talk that much about it because I've been mentioning it in the last like five videos, but this card is incredible. You know, it buffs your team for two mana. It also, you know, kills off sometimes a lot of your opponent's stuff. Um, you know, or just, you know, you do damage to their creature and then they get the, you know, they die and whatever because you've given them one less toughness or, you know, they're atta your opponent's attacking and then you, you know, cause them to not do that. Or, guys, it just, like, buffs your team. It doesn't really matter what your opponent's doing as long as you get the opportunity to buff your team. can kill their things if they're playing any sort of Lingering Soul strategy, Snapcaster Mage, anything, it kills those sort of creatures. So, yeah, Zal's Persecution is a really good card. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, the next card is um, one that I run in every single red-blue sideboard, and that is Is It Staticaster? This is another really, really good versatile card, um, just because it, it's it's really good in decks where they any, anything that's like one low mana cost stuff. I'm really hating on Lingering Souls, but if you're really bad against Lingering Souls, Is It Staticaster is a really good um, answer to that. Um, it's also got Flash, and it's also just 0-3. Sometimes it's just a blocker. Sometimes it's not really doing too much, and you're just like... Eh, pop my, you know, pop my Isn't Staticaster on the board so that I can block your creatures and do damage to them. Um, it also says with the same name as those creatures, so sometimes you just really two or three for one, or four for one with this card, um, really. It's, it's a very fantastic card, very underrated in my opinion. The next, this is another card that I've been talking about a lot recently when I've been talking about Black Removal, Slaughter Pact. I love this card. Oh my gosh. You know, everyone's on this Fatal Push kick where, like, it's Fatal Push everywhere. You know, free free as advertising for Fatal Push. But, like, honestly, Slaughter Pact, where it's at. Your opponent thinks that you have nothing. They think you've won the game. You're like, nah, bro. You know, whatever. Also, you may be casting this in the later stage of the game when your opponent thinks they have you. And so you're probably really don't care about paying the three mana. Just make sure you actually pay for your pack and remember that because, yeah, that's a pretty important thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, card's really good. Very good removal card in my opinion. Another card I've been talking a lot about recently, but... Ah, I just really like it. OG's oh, Command. Oh, I love this card. Cryptic Command is, like, all up here, like... Ah, uh, like Cryptic Command's up here, and like Ojitai's Command's like Cryptic Command's baby, basically. And Ojitai's Command's like trying to be noticed, but everyone's like, Cryptic Command's so great. And Ojitai's Command's like, hey, pay attention to me. Um, okay, return to our creature with converted mana cost. Please note, it says converted mana cost, not um, power or toughness. Two or less to go over to the battlefield. You get your Wall of Omens, you get your Snapcaster Mage. That's really good. Um, Ochai's Commanding and then Snapcaster Maging for, like, something else is really fantastic. Um, or you gain 4 life, or you counter draw a creature spell, or you draw a card. All the modes are really great. Um, if you're, if you're in, in a situation where, like, some of these may not be fantastic, bringing Snapcaster Mage back is probably just always going to be good, and drawing a card is literally always going to be good. So if you're kind of meh on those other modes, they're not really relevant, guess what the first, the, the ones I just mentioned are relevant probably almost all the time so even if you just have caster mage to block with it goodness knows we've all done it okay so let's talk about two mana creature everyone goes to tarmogoyf and i've mentioned several times how i don't give tarmogoyf the time of day because i like scavenging ooze okay this card is just amazing uh, just such a fantastic toolbox card because it's two mana for a two two you exile something from their graveyard so your opponent goes to target something with whatever, and you're like, nah, exile that card. Really, really important to do. Um, if it's a creature, it gets a plus one, plus one thing. However, if it doesn't, I need to gain one life. But guys, even if it doesn't, just exiling stuff is really good. Even if you're playing a strategy where they don't run a lot of creatures, but they have a ton of, like, um, Graveyard Recursion. If you're playing against, um, I'm blanking on the name, but it runs like Street Wraith, Wrath or whatever that card is, and you, you 
bring things back from your graveyard. I don't remember what that deck's name is, but yeah, this is a really good card against that. Um, you guys know what deck I'm talking about, but yeah. Scavenging Ooze is a fantastic two drop. Such a great, um, toolbox type card. If you're building any sort of toolbox deck, really great. It's also significantly cheaper than Tarmogoyf. All right, one of my all-time favorites. Absolutely love Swag Tusk. Thrag Tusk. Card's incredible. Seriously, card just does, like, everything. Okay, first off, it's a 5 mana 5-3. Like, okay, yeah, hello. ETBs, you gain 5 life. Like, come on. Leaves the battlefield. Not when it dies, you get a 3-3. Three, three. Honestly, what is not to like about Thrag Tusk? It's just all around an incredible card. Another really great toolbox card. Great for the sideboard to bring in if you're in games where you really, really need life or really need aggressive dudes. Thrag Tusk does that for you. I also really like, actually, that this card has a little bit less um, toughness, so it can potentially die a little bit sooner on so that you can get your 3-3 and potentially bring it back if you've got a little bit of recursion so you again gain 5 life. Like, come on, all around card is just incredible. Okay, so I talked about this card um, when I did my Jeskai, I think it was Jeskai Burn deck, um, because I knew this really savage kid who ran Soulfire Grandmaster Burn, and it was just like one of the sweetest decks I've ever seen, period. I wish I was that cool to run a deck like that. It was it was fantastic. Soulfire Grandmaster, entirely underrated, hands down a just bomb card. It, it's just nuts, okay? It's a 2 mana 2-2 two, two with lifelink. Instant sorceries have lifelink. Like, come on, this is just burn players playing against us hate this card. And the next time you cast your instant sorcery, you put it um, into your hand, into your graveyard. So, like, you just keep bringing your stuff back. You just keep bringing your lightning bolt back. Yeah, you have to pay a lot of mana for it, but come on, guys, in the mid-range, this card is just incredible, straight up. Or even if you don't, even if you just really need a body and you really need to gain some life, just Soulfire Grandmastering. I mean, it, it's got lifelink, so you can attack with it, gain a little bit of life, or block with it. And, you know, um... And just play like your lightning bolts and then just gain life off of that. Like, come on, what's not to love about this card? You know, you're kind of tied into a specific strategy, I would say, when you're playing with this card in terms of you're playing white-blue um, or white-red or both or all of those things, I should say. So you're playing a Jeskai build, but come on. I mean, if anything, sideboard. Like, this card is just great. Okay, this is a card that I hold near and dear to my heart just because... When I had Gris Grixis Control, I think I mean boarded this card because goodness knows, I'm a savage. Karanos, God of Storms. I mean, really, like, when Twin was a huge thing, Twin players ran this card, like, one of them in their sideboard because it's such a fantastic mid-range card. Okay, let's break it down. It's a 5 mana 6, 5 indestructible. Okay, let's, let me tell you something. If you're playing this in a control strategy, Karanos being a creature is not relevant. You're not focused on making him a creature because you getting um, seven devotion is probably not going to happen. He gives you two, so that means you have to get five others. But if you're playing blue, red, you're playing a lot of like instants and sorceries. So like the devotion, it doesn't matter. Him being a creature doesn't matter. Here's what does matter. The abilities on it. When you draw your first card, if it's a land, you get to draw a card. Okay, that's lit. And then, if you reveal a non-land card, it just bolts something. Come on, guys. This card is just fantastic. Absolutely incredible card. Um, definitely belongs in, like, every red-blue sideboard, every Jess Kite side. It just, it goes in there. You can find room for Karanos. Trust me. Swap it with a counterspell. I don't care. Like, he is just amazing. Great, great mid-range late-game card. You play this, your opponent's just not gonna live for much longer because they're gonna get bolted or you're gonna draw so many cards if you keep getting lands and just probably blow your opponent out of the board. Also, he's indestructible. He's, like, incredibly hard to remove. And even if he is a creature, like... All of your remo opponent's removal is not going to work. I mean, yeah, you could, like, Path to Exile him, but again, you need to get the Devotion to Path to Exile him, and the chance of you getting that off is not very likely. So the chance of him getting removed is so slim. You play him, a lot of times it's just straight-up game over. Card is amazing. Okay, sweet. Um, Card that is really good and depends totally on your meta, but Choke. Um... Man, I remember blowing a lot of people out when I played Elves because I just had Choke in my sideboard. Didn't do anything to me at all, and I was just like, 
choke. I was like, y your islands just don't untap. It doesn't say basic, so it includes their shock lands. Um, if you play this against a blue player, they're not very happy. I mean, really, they're they're coming up with ways to, you know, get rid of this card, basically. Um, great card. Absolutely fantastic. Um, okay, cool, guys. And the last card, um, funny, I'm actually going to be talking about this card in an upcoming deck tech whenever I get a chance to do this card. It's a really sweet, um... I don't remember actually the color combination off the top of my head. It's Zoo and I'm blanking on the color combination. It's red and white. It's red and white and some other colors and I don't remember what the- is it green? Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's Naya color. I don't know why I struggled with that for a hot second. But Goblin Bushwhacker. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Why don't people play this card? It's stupid. It's just so dumb. It's a one mana one one for kicker, okay? If it's kicked, now, so keep in mind, if you're kicking it, it's two mana, okay? If it's kicked, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, gain haste. Okay, this plus c collected company is just broken beyond belief, let me tell you. Um, keep in mind, though, when you play collected company, you can't pay the KR cost, so they kind of have, like, a weird sort of synergy going on there, but, like, if you collect a company and then Goblin Bushwhacker, like, whatever it is, like, whatever the state of the board is doing, or you just play Goblin Bushwhacker, like, guys, seriously, get, giving your team plus one plus oh is incredible. Giving them haste is just amazing. Any sort of aggressive red toolbox, zoo, any version wants to run this card because it's just busted. Really, card overall, one of my all-time favorites. I really appreciate this goblin. Wish more people ran it, so... Yeah, guys, that was it for underrated modern cards. I love doing these videos because there's just room to talk about such sweet cards that no one pays attention to. So, yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think are underrated modern cards, and I'll talk to you later.